What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another 2K20 video. Post fadeaways, post hop shots, post step backs. Are they good on NBA 2K20? The answer is yes, they are absolutely great on NBA 2K20. For whatever reason, there's a lot of people out there that think that they're no good and they're super inconsistent this year on 2K. And that's flat out wrong. They're very, very consistent. If you get a white on any of these shots, they consistently miss. You can almost guarantee yourself that if you white it, you mess up your timing, it's gonna miss. But on the other end of the spectrum, you can green all of these moves. They're very greenable. If you know your timing, even if someone's contesting you, you can green them as a post score. It's not a hard task to do, and they're very, very useful. When you're playing a good skilled defender, you have to be versatile in the post if you want any chance of being able to score on them consistently. A lot of players, they don't know their timing for the fades, and they're just saying that they don't work this year, they're no good, and they're settling for other moves. For example, spamming hook shots. That's something you see a lot of people doing nowadays is just spamming hook shots, which is a great move. The hook this year is phenomenal. If you're seven foot three, your defender is 6'11 or smaller, they're not gonna be able to contest you on these hook shots. It's a great move to utilize. But if you're playing another 7'3 defender that's good at defense, they're gonna get a stop on you in those hook shots. You might get one or two, but it's not gonna work to spam hook shots all game long. You need to be versatile to really be able to defeat that opponent. And you need to utilize these phase, these hop shots, these step backs, in the game it's very very viable option this year i don't know why a lot of people think it's not you guys i don't know if you just got some whites they don't go in you gave up on it learn your timing and that's what we're going to talk about here today some different tools that you guys can utilize to be able to green these shots and kind of learn your timing and incorporate it into your game i mean look at this play right here just take a look look at this step back this is absolutely disgusting look at the range on this matter of fact we need to look at a replay of this Thank you, voiceover Giuseppe. We're coming here live at the replay center to take a look back at this clip. And oh my goodness, look at the range on that hop shot right there. That's absolutely ridiculous. If Steph Curry was a post scorer, this would be the Steph Curry range of post scoring. That's about as far back as you can get for a step back, smack it in his face. Only the best of the best post scores can hit something like that. Back to you, voiceover Giuseppe. At this point, I'm sure some of you guys are asking, well, Giuseppe, how do I green as consistently as you when I get nothing but whites on these different post moves? Well, I'm glad that you asked. As this gameplay is coming to a finish here, I'm going to show you guys some of my different tips and some of the techniques I utilize to be able to green these moves a lot more consistently so you guys can try it out so you can incorporate the post fades back into your arsenal of post moves. And then on top of that, of course, my animations are absolutely lethal. If you guys want to update an animation video, let me know down below. Couple things have changed. I want to get that stuff out to you guys, but I got to make sure that you guys actually want to see it. So let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different techniques that I'm using to be able to green these shots that you guys can do the same thing and start greening more shots. The first thing and probably the most important thing we're going to look at today is the different shooting badges. Trying to green consistently in the post without the proper badges is like trying to have sex without a boner. It's just not going to work. So these badges are essentially going to act as the Viagra of your post scoring. It's gonna make sure everything's running at optimal performance and make it a lot easier to green. So having these badges is key. And I'm gonna show you guys my premium post scoring badge loadout for shooting badges that's gonna help you guys get more greens down there in the post. Now the first thing and the most important badge out of all of these is quick draw. A lot of people don't realize quick draw activates for your fades, hop shots, and step backs and changes the timing of them. It makes them a lot quicker. So having a high quick draw is super important because you want to be able to get those shots off quicker before the defense can come and contest you. And on top of that, a quicker a quicker release feels a lot more natural for you than a super slow release. That slow release, it does not feel natural holding that button that long to get off a fadeaway. So having quick draw is gonna help with that and make it a lot easier to reach that green window. The next very important badge is going to be deep fades. I've had some people tell me they don't feel deep fades is necessary because they don't take fadeaways from super far out of the paint. It's still necessary. It acts the same way as range extender. Not only does it help you on those very deep fadeaways, but everything in front of that range, it helps you on those as well. Essentially what it does is it improves your maximum distance that you can do fadeaways and everything in front of that maximum distance also improves, which is the same thing range extender does for the three point line. So it's absolutely critical that you have deep fades on. It's going to make it a lot easier to time your different moves wherever you're shooting them from. So make sure you're using deep fades. This thing needs to be on Hall of Fame. I know some of you guys got a build that only gets like three or four shooting badges. If you only get a couple, quick draw, you need quick draw. Quick draw is the most important. If you don't have quick draw, there's no point in doing fadeaways because if you're going that slow, I can come in there and block that thing at any time I want because it's so slow. So you need quick draw. The next badge is going to be Hot Zone Hunter. 
obviously the caveat with hot zone hunter is you have to maintain hot zones in the park for this to be worth anything so make sure you're shooting consistently take smart and open shots so you can get those hot zones so your hot zone hunter activates and it's gonna make it a lot easier to green for you speaking of making it easier to green green machine is a no-brainer as you're stringing together greens green machine is going to make your window larger and larger and larger making it easy to continue to get those greens every single time so this is obviously something you want to have on gold if you have extra badges slap this thing on hall of fame it's not a bad look at all the last one that i utilize is range extender because not only do i like to post up but sometimes i like to be able to shoot the three or the medium range shot so this helps me with that if you guys have no interest in shooting jump shots take off range extender throw it on dead eye dead eye is a pretty solid badge it will help you on your fadeaways but most of the time i'm not taking contested fadeaways so i don't feel it's too important to me now one badge a lot of people ask me as far as fadeaways is steady shooter or flexible release those two badges right there I feel like they're both awful for fadeaways, specifically flexible release. People ask me, the goal is to get a green. I don't know why you would use a badge that helps you on your whites because the goal is to green every single time. So this badge is out of the question. A steady shooter, I don't like that it takes a penalty when you're taking a wide open shot. So I do not suggest using this either. I think this is personally the best load that you can get for scoring in the post as far as your badges are concerned. Next tip I have for you guys is utilization of jump shot boosts. I get this question all the time. Does jump shot boost help your post fadeaways, etc.? And yes, it does. Fadeaways, hop shots, and step backs are all considered jump shots in this game, and these boosts will raise the percentage of those shots. So absolutely copy yourself some jump shot boosts to make it a little bit easier to time those things. And then of course, talking about jump shots as well brings me to my next tip is stop changing your jump shot every single day. I know so many people are out there, as soon as they get one or two whites on a jumper or a couple of them miss, they go on YouTube, find a new jumper and change it because they think their jumper's trash. You need to stick with your jumper, learn the timing of it, get comfortable with it and keep that one. Stop changing it over and over. You're never gonna learn your fadeaway, hot shot and step back timings if you're changing your jump shot because your jump shot is gonna change the timing of those moves as well. So you need to stick to one jump shot. Find a jump shot you like, learn it and stick with it you're gonna have bad games just because you miss a few shots in one game does not mean it's time to change your jump shot keep it everyone has a bad game and then just grow from there so make sure you guys are keeping your same jump shots the next tip i have for you guys is running all the way over here to your my court you need to go over to your my court and practice some shots i know it's not the most ideal it's not the most flattering thing to do is sitting in your my court taking shots but it's going to help you learn your timing some. It's not going to be the exact same as the timing in the park or anti up, but it's going to kind of give you at least an idea of the, the green window for your fadeaway. It's going to give you an idea of where you need to time it, and you can adjust it for every single game mode. For example, even if I go play in Europe servers for an event for more double rep, my timing is different, but after a few shots, I'm going to learn the difference, and it's just a very small adjustment to be able to time it properly. So yes, going in your my court is not going to be the absolute perfect timing as it would be in park, which I get people saying that all the time, but it's still going to give you at least a mindset of where the green window is, and then you can make that small adjustment to whatever the park timing is. And then the last tip that I have for you guys, of course, is taking smart shots. Stop taking terrible shot attempts. I see that all the time. People are taking really poor shot attempts, just spamming up random fades without thinking about it, and then they say fades are broken. Well, you took a terrible shot attempt. If you took a smarter shot attempt, it probably would have went in. So I highly recommend that you guys take some smarter shot attempts out there instead of just spamming up random ones, and I guarantee you will see a lot more success. So that's the five different tips I have for you guys on how to green more often in the post. I hope it helps you guys. I, I, I really do. It's not too complicated to get greens in a post. You just have to put the time in and practice just like anything else in life. Hopefully this helped. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. We drop video content all the time and we do daily streams. If you guys are missing out on the streams, shame on you. We have a good time in the streams. You guys need to be there streaming every single day on YouTube. Check it out. But hey, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.